Hi, welcome to 9.9 .9 Comics with Chris and Kyle. Yes, and welcome back. Sorry we missed you last week, but I am Kyle. And I am a hooded, getting over a cold Chris. Sounds good. And here are our top five picks for this week, guys. And starting off with number five, we have Orphan Age number one out of Aftershock Comics, written by Ted Anderson and art and cover art by Nuno Plati. Plati. <laughs> one day, all the adults died all over the world at the same time. Now it's 20 years later, and the children, all grown up, are still rebuilding the world. Horses and caravans are the only thin lines connecting tiny scattered settlements. Little sparks in the great dark night. Gasoline is gone, phones long dead, television and memory. The only power in America is the new church, the religion of the angry children, that blames the destruction of the old world on the dead adults. In the settlement of Dallas Town, a stranger comes riding in one day, telling a story of escape from the new church's unstoppable fireman. The fireman? What is this? Fahrenheit 451? The church is on the march, and the world might burn again. And the only hope might be a scared teenage girl, a gunslinger keeping his secrets, and a woman of a few words and long knives. Welcome to the Orphan Age. So, that's a very interesting story, which is why, why it kind of caught our eye. Uh, secrets. Yes, secrets. And also, it is after out of a, Aftershock, which uh, as of the past couple years has been doing really well with uh, everything they've been releasing. And also, this is a low print and low stock comic, so if you grab one, your odds of it um, increasing in rarity uh, are, high. are very high. Okay. Yes. I'm excited for this out of Aftershock, because Aftershock Comics, almost everything they put out has a darker like grungy horrorish feel like even non-horror comics mm -hmm. have like uh shanghai red i believe was aftershock not really a horror comic gruesome but not horror was Reading klaus it. aftershock no i don't think klaus is no. aftershock oh, that's an older one anyway but i i just love how everything they put out has just like this incredibly dark mm -hmm. vibe to it so right. i'm really excited to see what they do on the inside with this All right, and coming in at number four, we have Faithless, number one of five, uh, written by Brian Azzarello. I wonder why that's from, oh yeah, that's right, Batman Damned. Um, art by Maria Lovett and cover art by Paul Pope. Uh, Faith, sex, the devil. Weird combination. Faith likes to dabble with magic. Her friends think it's cute and not just a little off-putting. But it's part of her charm, and her warped search for a purpose in a world that makes too much sense. But she's a true believer, and knows there is a power within her reach. She's right, of course. It just took a while for that magic, that temptation, that unknowable thing to find her. In short, Faith is bored as hell, and hell has notice. Uh, New York Times bestselling writer Brian Azzarello from 100 Bullets Batman Damned, and artist Maria Lovett from Loud, with Eisner Award winning artist Paul Pope on covers, coalesce in a story of self-exploration, eroticism, and maybe even love. Maybe. So the big deals with this obviously are Brian Azzarello being writer of Batman Damned, which is, is huge, a major issue for why huge, we pull this for this. Huge, huge deal. Um, it is a diamond gem of the month, so obviously even the distributor thinks it's a huge, huge deal. Um, and it's a short run, easy to collect. It's out of boom, so not low print runs, but also not like ridiculous Marvel DC. Yeah, not overprinted comics. <laughs> by any means. So it's definitely an easy one to collect and easy one to not necessarily get your hands on, but easy to easy enough to get your hands on. It's not going to be too hard to find, uh, but also they will run out pretty. Quick. Go to your local comic book shop that sells independence, and they'll have it for sure. And our number three for this week is Batman Who Laughs, number four of six out of DC Comics, written by, of course, Scott Snyder, and art and cover art by Jock. Batman is on a desperate hunt through Gotham City, tracking down the dark version of himself known as the Grim Knight. But the serum Batman's been self-administering has started to transform his mind, making him into something much darker, something amoral, something like the Batman Who Laughs, and he's starting to lose his grip with reality. 
Towing the line between vengeance and justice, Batman must struggle to keep his moral code as the Grim Knight gains control of the Batcave, sending all of his vehicles and weapons on a collision course with Gotham City. The Grim Knight, the Batman who laughs, even allies like Jim Gordon and his son force Batman to pull the trigger and activate the last laugh. Will Batman be a savior of Gotham City once more, or is he the kill shot? So, quite simply, the only reason why we want you to buy this is because it's Batman Who Laughs and it's highly collectible. Batman Who Laughs is doing awesome right now. It is the hottest DC comic out right now. So, it's, it's going to be on the list pretty much every time <laughs> it comes out. So, Definitely. next two months, you're going to be getting <laughs> two more months of Batman Who Laughs. And moving into number two out of Marvel Comics. Symbiote Spider-Man number one of five, uh, written by Peter David, art by Eben Coelho, and cover art by Greg Land. Everyone knows that Spider-Man's infamous black suit would someday become the wicked web slinger called Venom. But what happened before Peter Parker discovered the black suit's sinister secret? Find out in this dynamic tale from comics legends Peter David and Greg Land. Set during the original Black Suit Saga, this is an all-new tale that pits the wall-crawling wonder against that most mystifying of menaces, Mysterio. I love Mysterio. He, honestly, like, uh, he's such the way Spider-Man villain. Yeah, awesome. but he, uh, so he was cool. low-key one of my favorites. I used to draw him all the time when I was a kid. I love the fishbowl. It's great. Like, yeah. He's just a dude in a fishbowl. Um, so, obviously, uh, reasons we think this one is going to blow up are the Greg Land cover, uh, Greg Land is huge right now, like huge, um, and it's continuing the original symbiote story, which is a pretty interesting thing to be, a interesting place to be going, uh, story-wise, because yeah. it's, it's retcon it's, material. It's, it's retcon and it's old, and it's gonna be interesting how they tie it in 20, 30 years later after it came out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it has Mysterio, who is going to be blowing back up with Spider-Man Far From Home coming out. Um, being said to be the, one of the main bad guys, if not the main bad guy. Jake Gyllenhaal is supposed to be. Yeah, here. which that's exciting because yeah. it's basically clone of the original Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> wow. I've always said that Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, Tobey Maguire are clones. They're of basically each other. the same person. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's pretty cool. But it's time for the next point. And speaking of Spider-Man, in our number one spot this week, our 9.9 .9 no-brainer is Web of Venom, Cult of Carnage, number one out of Marvel Comics, written by Frank Thierry, art by Danilo Bayruth, and cover art by Joshua Carasa. Casara. Wow. Carasa. <laughs> Dyslexia. <laughs> Dis Dyslexia. Dyslexia. <laughs> A new terror has ridden, risen on the fringes of the Marvel Universe, stirring in the depths of space. But evil is also rising on Earth, claiming one victim at a time in the name of the killer called Carnage. So, big things about this, guys. Uh, Carnage is uh, going to be rising in popularity, well, has has risen in popularity again uh, because of the, if you stayed through, if you watched the recent Venom movie uh, with the guy who plays Bane, and um, I keep forgetting his name, but they show Carnage at the end of it and everyone freaked the hell out and they're supposedly uh, be he's going to be in he's going to he's going to be it's the main confirmed. bad guy it's in the Venom 2 movie so he's he's going to be even blowing up it's even confirmed. more Woody Harrelson right. is Carnage yes. the main yes. bad guy in Venom 2 it's Cletus I think that's Cletus Cassidy yeah um Web of Venom it's uh, it's part of the Web of Venom run which is very popular and this is also a lead up to the new Donny Cates book Absolute Carnage which is going to be um, basically the lead up of all of Donny Cates' work in, uh, in Venom has been leading up to this point and he's even reaching back into like the beginning of the symbiote, like whenever it was introduced he's, he's using all of that continuity in this storyline and all of this has been leading up to this huge event that he's like this is going to be one of the biggest events of Marvel in recent history. Um, and there are also, um, side note, there will be a free com comic book day uh, to tie in this comic and the uh, the first uh, Carnage, uh, Absolute Carnage is going to be coming out. It, it, it'll kind of be blending in those two stories. But it's, there's just if there's one comic you you, you, you want to pay attention to this week, it is ab it is absolutely a Web of Venom, Cult of Carnage. Yes, very much so. 
And now it is time for the honorable mentions. Out of Dark Horse, we have Astro Hustle number two. Out of DC Comics, we have Catwoman number 10, obviously for the Archer variant. Let's. Uh, Batman number 68, obviously for the Matina variant. Red Hood Outlaw number 33 for the Lucio Perillo variant. Uh, <laughs> as as I'm somebody that's collected almost all the Red Hoods from this, and an absolute must-have for everyone. Like this is phenomenal. Uh, moving on, Action Lab Entertainment. Uh, we have Cold Blood Samurai number one. Out of Image, we have Fair Lady number one, Murder Falcon number seven, and Oblivion Song number fourteen. Out of Boom Studios, we have Ronan Island number two, and out of Marvel, we have. Age of Conan, Baylet number two, and Savage Sword of Conan number four. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of really, really good honorable mentions this week, and I think our top five is it's a good very, week for very comics. On point. It's a, it's a great, great week for comics. So with that, we thank you for sticking around, liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you haven't, please click that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you get notified when our videos come up. And. Uh, and once again, just want to say sorry we missed you last week. Yeah. Thanks for sticking around and tuning in this week. Yeah, Chris is under the weather, and I had I just had too much going on at home. I'm like, if Chris isn't going to be there, let's just do a bye week because I got personal stuff. But Worked we're out. back. And we're back. Back in action. Action Jackson. Guess who's back? Back again. Chris and Kyle are back. I think, Tell do we? Friend. Wait, do we have to get a copyright for this? <laughs> I don't know.